A pneumothorax is an abnormal collection of air or gas in the pleural space that causes an uncoupling of the lung from the chest wall. Like pleural effusion, pneumothorax may interfere with normal breathing. It is often called collapsed lung, although that term may also refer to atelectasis. A primary pneumothorax is one that occurs without an apparent cause and in the absence of significant lung disease. While a secondary pneumothorax occurs in the presence of existing lung pathology, in a minority of cases, the amount of air in the chest increases markedly when a one-way valve is formed by an area of damaged tissue, leading to a tension pneumothorax. This condition is a medical emergency that can cause steadily worsening oxygen shortage and low blood pressure. Unless reversed by effective treatment, these sequelae can progress and cause death. Pneumothoraces can be caused by physical trauma to the chest, or as a complication of medical or surgical intervention. Symptoms typically include chest pain and shortness of breath. Diagnosis of a pneumothorax by physical examination alone can be difficult or inconclusive, so a chest radiograph or computed tomography scan is usually used to confirm its presence. Small spontaneous pneumothoraces typically resolve without treatment and require only monitoring. This approach may be most appropriate in subjects who have no significant underlying lung disease in larger pneumothoraces, or when there are marked symptoms. The air may be extracted with a syringe or a chest tube connected to a one-way valve system. Occasionally, surgical interventions may be required when tube drainage is unsuccessful, or as a preventive measure, if there have been repeated episodes. The surgical treatments usually involve pleurodesis or pleuroectomy. Signs and Symptoms a primary spontaneous pneumothorax tends to occur in a young adult without underlying lung problems, and usually causes limited symptoms. Chest pain and sometimes mild breathlessness are the usual predominant presenting features. People who are affected by PSPs are often unaware of potential danger and may wait several days before seeking medical attention. PSPs more commonly occur during changes in atmospheric pressure, explaining to some extent why episodes of pneumothorax may happen in clusters. It is rare for PSPs to cause tensioned pneumothoraces. Secondary spontaneous pneumothoraces, by definition, occur in individuals with significant underlying lung disease. Symptoms in SSPs tend to be more severe than in PSPs, as the unaffected lungs are generally unable to replace the loss of function in the affected lungs. Hypoxemia is usually present and may be observed as cyanosis. Hypercapnia is sometimes encountered, this may cause confusion and, if very severe, may result in comas. The sudden onset of breathlessness in someone with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, cystic fibrosis, or other serious lung diseases should therefore prompt investigations to identify the possibility of a pneumothorax. Traumatic pneumothorax most commonly occurs when the chest wall is pierced such as when a stab wound or gunshot wound allows air to enter the pleural space, or because some other mechanical injury to the lung compromises the integrity of the involved structures. Traumatic pneumothoraces have been found to occur in up to half of all cases of chest trauma, with only rib fractures being more common in this group. The pneumothorax can be occult in half of these cases, but may enlarge, particularly if mechanical ventilation is required. They are also encountered in patients already receiving mechanical ventilation for some other reason. Upon physical examination, breath sounds may be diminished on the affected side, partly because air in the pleural space dampens the transmission of sound. Measures of the conduction of vocal vibrations to the surface of the chest may be altered. Percussion of the chest may be perceived as hyperresonant, and vocal resonance and tactile fremitus can both be noticeably decreased. 
Importantly, the volume of the pneumothorax can show limited correlation with the intensity of the symptoms experienced by the victim, and physical signs may not be apparent if the pneumothorax is relatively small. Tension pneumothorax Although multiple definitions exist, a tension pneumothorax is generally considered to be present when a pneumothorax leads to significant impairment of respiration and or blood. Circulation. Tension pneumothorax tends to occur in clinical situations such as ventilation, resuscitation, trauma, or in patients with lung disease. The most common findings in people with tension pneumothorax are chest pain and respiratory distress, often with an increased heart rate and rapid breathing in the initial stages. Other findings may include quieter breath sounds on one side of the chest, low oxygen levels and blood pressure. In displacement of the trachea away from the affected side, rarely, there may be cyanosis, altered level of consciousness. A hyperresonant percussion note on examination of the affected side with reduced expansion and decreased movement, pain in the epigastrium, displacement of the apex beat, and resonant sound when tapping the sternum. This is a medical emergency and may require immediate treatment without further investigations. Tension pneumothorax may also occur in someone who is receiving mechanical ventilation, in which case it may be difficult to spot as the person is typically receiving sedation. It is often noted because of a sudden deterioration in condition. Recent studies have shown that the development of tension features may not always be as rapid as previously thought. Deviation of the trachea to one side and the presence of raised jugular venous pressure are not reliable as clinical signs. Cause Primary spontaneous Spontaneous pneumothoraces are divided into two types. Primary, which occurs in the absence of known lung disease, and secondary, which occurs in someone with underlying lung disease. The cause of primary spontaneous pneumothorax is unknown, but established risk factors include male sex, smoking, and a family history of pneumothorax. The various suspected underlying mechanisms are discussed below. Secondary spontaneous Secondary spontaneous pneumothorax occurs in the setting of a variety of lung diseases. The most common is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, which accounts for approximately 70% of cases. Known lung diseases that may significantly increase the risk for pneumothorax are in children. Additional causes include measles, echinococcosis, inhalation of a foreign body, and certain congenital malformations. 11.5% of people with a spontaneous pneumothorax have a family member who has previously experienced a pneumothorax. The hereditary conditions Marfan syndrome, homocystinuria, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, and bert hogue syndrome have all been linked to familial pneumothorax. Generally, these conditions cause other signs and symptoms as well, and pneumothorax is not usually the primary finding. But hogg dubbe syndrome is caused by mutations in the FLCN gene, which encodes a protein named folliculin. FLCN mutations and lung lesions have also been identified in familial cases of pneumothorax where other features of bert hogg dubbe syndrome are absent. In addition to the genetic associations, the HLA haplotype A2B40 is also a genetic predisposition to PSP. Traumatic A traumatic pneumothorax may result from either blunt trauma or penetrating injury to the chest wall. The most common mechanism is due to the penetration of sharp bony points at a new rib fracture, which damages lung tissue. Traumatic pneumothorax may also be observed in those exposed to blasts, even though there is no apparent injury to the chest. Medical procedures, such as the insertion of a central venous catheter into one of the chest veins or the taking of biopsy samples from lung tissue, may lead to pneumothorax. The administration of positive pressure ventilation, either mechanical ventilation or non-invasive ventilation, can result in barotrauma leading to a pneumothorax. 
Divers who breathe from an underwater apparatus are supplied with breathing gas at ambient pressure, which results in their lungs containing gas at higher than atmospheric pressure. Divers breathing compressed air may suffer a pneumothorax as a result of barotrauma from ascending just one meter while breath holding with their lungs fully inflated. An additional problem in these cases is that those with other features of decompression sickness are typically treated in a diving chamber with hyperbaric therapy. This can lead to a small pneumothorax rapidly enlarging and causing features of tension. Mechanism The thoracic cavity is the space inside the chest that contains the lungs, heart, and numerous major blood vessels. On each side of the cavity, a pleural membrane covers the surface of lung and also lines the inside of the chest wall. Normally, the two layers are separated by a small amount of lubricating serous fluid. The lungs are fully inflated within the cavity because the pressure inside the airways is higher than the pressure inside the pleural space. Despite the low pressure in the pleural space, air does not enter it because there are no natural connections to an air-containing passage, and the pressure of gases in the bloodstream is too low for them to be forced into the pleural space. Therefore, a pneumothorax can only develop if air is allowed to enter through damage to the chest wall or damage to the lung itself, or occasionally because microorganisms in the pleural space produce gas. Chest wall defects are usually evident in cases of injury to the chest wall, such as stab or bullet wounds. In secondary spontaneous pneumothoraces, vulnerabilities in the lung tissue are caused by a variety of disease processes, particularly by rupturing of bully in cases of severe emphysema. Areas of necrosis may precipitate episodes of pneumothorax, although the exact mechanism is unclear. Primary spontaneous pneumothorax has for many years been thought to be caused by plebs which were presumed to be more common in those classically at risk of pneumothorax due to mechanical factors. In PSP, plebs can be found in 77% of cases, compared to 6% in the general population without a history of PSP. As these healthy subjects do not all develop a pneumothorax later, the hypothesis may not be sufficient to explain all episodes. Furthermore, pneumothorax may recur even after surgical treatment of plebs. It has therefore been suggested that PSP may also be caused by areas of disruption in the pleural layer, which are prone to rupture. Smoking may additionally lead to inflammation and obstruction of small airways, which account for the markedly increased risk of PSPs in smokers. Once air has stopped entering the pleural cavity, it is gradually reabsorbed. Tension pneumothorax occurs when the opening that allows air to enter the pleural space functions as a one-way valve, allowing more air to enter with every breath but none to escape. The body compensates by increasing the respiratory rate and tidal volume, worsening the problem. Unless corrected, hypoxia and respiratory arrest eventually follow. Diagnosis the symptoms of pneumothorax can be vague and inconclusive, especially in those with a small PSP. Confirmation with medical imaging is usually required. In contrast, tension pneumothorax is a medical emergency and may be treated before imaging, especially if there is severe hypoxia, very low blood pressure, or an impaired level of consciousness. Intention pneumothorax, X-rays are sometimes required if there is doubt about the anatomical location of the pneumothorax. Chest X-ray Traditionally a plain radiograph of the chest, ideally with the X-ray beams being projected from the back, has been the most appropriate first investigation. These are usually performed during maximal inspiration. No added information is gathered by obtaining a chest X-ray in expiration. If the par X-ray does not show a pneumothorax but there is a strong suspicion of one, lateral X-rays may be performed. But this is not routine practice. It is not unusual for the mediastinum to be shifted away from the affected lung due to the pressure differences. This is not equivalent to a tension pneumothorax, which is determined mainly by the constellation of symptoms, hypoxia, and shock. 
The size of the pneumothorax can be determined with a reasonable degree of accuracy by measuring the distance between the chest wall and the lung. This is relevant to treatment, as smaller pneumothoraces may be managed differently. An air rim of 2 cm means that the pneumothorax occupies about 50% of the hemithorax. British professional guidelines have traditionally stated that the measurement should be performed at the level of the hilum with 2 cm as the cut-off, while American guidelines state that the measurement should be done at the apex of the lung with 3 cm differentiating between a small and a large pneumothorax. The latter method may overestimate the size of a pneumothorax if it is located mainly at the apex, which is a common occurrence. The various methods correlate poorly, but are the best easily available ways of estimating pneumothorax size. CT scanning can provide a more accurate determination of the size of the pneumothorax, but its routine use in this setting is not recommended. Not all pneumothoraces are uniform, some only form a pocket of air in a particular place in the chest. Small amounts of fluid may be noted on the chest X-ray, this may be blood. In some cases, the only significant abnormality may be the deep sulcus sign, in which the normally small space between the chest wall and the diaphragm appears enlarged due to the abnormal presence of fluid. Computed tomography Computed tomography is not necessary for the diagnosis of pneumothorax, but it can be useful in particular situations. In some lung diseases, especially emphysema, it is possible for abnormal lung areas such as bully to have the same appearance as a pneumothorax on chest X-ray, and it may not be safe to apply any treatment before the distinction is made and before the exact location and size of the pneumothorax is determined. In trauma, where it may not be possible to perform an upright film, chest radiography may miss up to a third of pneumothoraces. While CT remains very sensitive, a further use of CT is in the identification of underlying lung lesions. In presumed primary pneumothorax, it may help to identify blebs or cystic lesions, and in secondary pneumothorax it can help to identify most of the causes listed above. Ultrasound Ultrasound is commonly used in the evaluation of people who have sustained physical trauma, for example with the FAST protocol. Ultrasound may be more sensitive than chest X-rays in the identification of pneumothorax after blunt trauma to the chest. Ultrasound may also provide a rapid diagnosis in other emergency situations and allow the quantification of the size of the pneumothorax. Several particular features on ultrasonography of the chest can be used to confirm or exclude the diagnosis.